Good morning. Well, uh, good morning. I am Pat McDaniels, your worship associate for today. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Wayne County. We are a diverse congregation that welcomes you as you are, regardless of your age, ethnicity, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, economic status, or physical ability. We come together to seek deeper meaning and understanding from each other and the world around us. Your presence here today is a gift that brings us closer to that understanding. <clears throat> We're an active community that lives its values beyond the hours of Sunday service. And I would like to call your attention to the following. Join the UUFWC Humanist Group today at 1130 in the large group room. Phil Grimm will share a presentation about trails. When I first read this, I thought it said trials, but no. Trails in Ohio, past, present, and future. This presentation will be followed by questions and a discussion. After the service today, please visit the stewardship table in the lobby to submit your pledge and get a sweet treat. Stewardship will staff this table every Sunday through the end of March. The Social Action Committee is excited to resume collecting selected items for People to People Ministries. We've put a large basket outside the lobby in the hallway for your donations. For March, we're focusing on the following. Paper and cleaning products, toilet paper, dish soap, laundry detergent. Thanks for helping us to help others. If you'd like to find out more about our activities, feel free to ask Karen Skubik um, over there, our membership coordinator. Thank you, Pat. And I want to thank whoever put these beautiful flowers here. Oh my goodness, we're pointing at Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. All right, good morning, all, and welcome to those of you present here and our friends online, and maybe some future friends online as well. So, hi, everybody online, yes. So, welcoming. Welcoming can take on many forms. And for decades, we gave our visitors the option to stand and introduce themselves. This was very helpful for many of us who couldn't always recognize who a visitor was and or was not. However, we want our visitors to feel comfortable. And for some, being put on the spot felt just the opposite. So last Sunday, we tried a little experiment with a different type of welcoming, taking a couple minutes to greet those around us. I think a lot of you were here for that. Um, some stood up and walked to somebody that they had never met before, and others simply turned around and said hi to their neighbors. Um, well, just like our decades long practice, this experiment received mixed reviews. <laughs> and I can hear some laughing that gave me those mixed reviews. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your feedback. And your feedback uh, is always welcome. So thank you, everyone, for that. Um, so at this time, as the membership coordinator, I'm simply going to be standing in the back um, after the service. Um, and also, uh, we have uh, trained greeters that will, well, actually, could the ones that are, quote, on duty today stand up? Bert's already standing up back there. And who else is on duty? Karen's waving to us from the hallway. Laura's standing up here. So they are today's official greeters, and they would love if you came to them and talked to them if you're new here, just visiting for the first time, as well as myself. Bert's shaking his head and holding his heart, so he, he would love to talk to you and give you a tour if you like, as would I. Um, but also for anyone, oh, I, I should ask other greeters. How many other greeters that we have? Just raise your hand, Jay, yeah, oh, they're all over the place, okay. So those are also folks that if they're nearby you and you're a visitor, you can talk to them as well. So thank you, everybody. But for anyone who prefers, printed visitor information is available in the lobby under the clock. 
And I just want to thank everyone for your input and patience during this time of transition, and welcome. Good morning. I didn't really mean for this to be the Sharon show today where I'm up here a lot, but it just kind of worked out that way. So my name is Sharon Delgadillo, and I am the pianist and music director of the fellowship. It has been my privilege to contribute to our music program for over 21 years. Wow, I know. It kind of, oh no, no. It was more the shock of how long it's been. <laughs> Considering I'm only 30, you know? <laughs> You didn't really have to laugh that hard. <laughs> so when stewardship approached me and asked me to think about what if for the stewardship program, my first thought was how lucky we are that the leadership gives us permission to dream. What if are such powerful words and to use them to give us the building blocks of our future is really amazing. Um, and those of you that know me, the second thought I thought I had was this is dangerous because I have a little bit of Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland in me. And um, I do a lot of, we can do a show. <laughs> Remember the madrigal starting? So, <laughs> so many of us are moved, touched, and inspired by music. Music is the universal language. Music has the power to reach across the aisle and find commonality when other things divide us. Music is also a way that we can communicate with one another. It is a way for us to show our roots, our beliefs, and our culture. What if we could create a music program that connected our community beyond these walls? What if we could create a youth music program Start a band, a singing group, and a choir for all of our young people. And what if the program invited all the youth in the area to join us to provide a loving, accepting space for expression? What if we had a group of singers that were armed and ready to attend a rally or protest at a moment's notice? What if? Those singers were trained to teach the attendees songs that would help unite the front of social action. And what if that group were open to the community <clears throat> to unite all beliefs behind the cause? One that would melt away other differences because we were together behind social justice. One of our founders, Lynn Drum, <clears throat> sorry, had the foresight to lay the foundation of our music program we have today. When she passed, Sandy Sheffield created a program called Lynn's Legacy. Um, the program really never got off to too much, but the program was designed for musicians to attend the bedside of the sick, the bereaved, and the dying, providing solace and the healing energy of music. What if we could revive that program? <clears throat> and use it not only as a resource for our congregation, but also a resource for the community. There is a quote by Robert Fripp, who founded the group King Crimson, if some of you are my age. Um, Music has the capacity for acting as a vehicle for the impossible to enter our world. What if our music program, sorry, <clears throat> became a vehicle for that impossible? I did not expect to have King Crimson dropped on the chancel today. Good job for Prague Rock. All right. Good morning, everybody. I am the Reverend Walter Clark. I would like to welcome you here this morning for our worship service. You'll notice you got one of these today. Um, this is one of our four solstice equinox services that we do. Sharon and I, I love, we talk about, Sharon talked about Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney. We're still figuring out who's who when we plan these services together because 
Sharon says, I want to do something embodied. I want to do something in the spirit of music, right, that stirs the soul in ways that's more than just sitting there. So I encourage you to bring your full self to this service. Participate as you feel comfortable with your eggs and little mystery packets and pens to open your hearts for what is coming, for the days are now getting longer. The sun is now bright and out and opening our hearts. Please join us as we open our hearts together in our service. This morning, our chalice lighting will be done with a meditation in movement. We invite you to participate as you are able. You can do this standing, sitting, or just being. Okay, go ahead. So, so I'm going to show you the movements, um, and then if you want to participate, please stand up so you know what you're doing. Okay. So, we face east. Is that okay? Just do it, yeah. We face east. We open our wings of knowledge and inspiration. We reach to the east and gather the energy of air. We pull it into our heart, push it down to the earth, bring it up to the sky, and pull it back to our center. Slower. Slower. Okay. So let's go ahead. So if you'd like to join us, we'll start with the east. Yeah, we'll do that over. <laughs> okay, we face east. We open our wings of knowledge and inspiration. We reach to the east and gather the energy of air. We pull it into our heart, push it down to the earth, bring it up to the sky, and pull it back to our center. We face south. We open our wings of knowledge and transformation. We reach to the south and gather the energy of fire. We pull it into our heart, push it down to the earth, bring it up to the sky, and pull it back to our center. We face west. We open our wings of knowledge and self-reflection. We reach to the west and gather the energy of water. We pull it into our heart, push it down to the earth, bring it up to the sky, and pull it back to our center. We face north. 
We open our wings of knowledge and grounding. We reach to the north and gather the energy of earth. We pull it into our heart, push it down to the earth, bring it up to the sky, and pull it back to our center. Now I would ask you to open your minds and silence your cell phones, please, for our time together. Let us now rise in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn. The music can be found in the Teal Hymnal, number 1011, Return Again. Good morning, friends. Good morning, my smaller friends. Oh, today's St. Patrick's Day. Perhaps we should do this in an Irish accent. If I could have all of my uh, younger friends and uh, more energetic friends at heart come down to the front uh, for our time for all ages. If anyone who is feeling the mood to be a little closer, uh, I'd be glad to have you down front. Are you, are you ready, Hawthorne? Yes. Uh, excellent. Are you ready? Yeah, all right, pound one out for me. There we go. Thank you, thank you. All right, we're going to drop this now and back to English. There we go. <laughs> Do you all know what holiday is coming up? What holiday is coming? St. Patrick's Day. Oh, St. Patrick's Day. What else we got coming up? Easter. Easter. What else? East eggs. Any of you know what? The spring equinox. The spring equinox. Five points to Ravenclaw. Excellent. The Spring Equinox, and we're going to talk a little bit today about a folk tale that centers around the beginning of spring and the goddess of spring. Her name is Ostara. Am I saying that right, Ostara? Do you want to hear the story of Ostara? Yes. All right. You ready? All right. I just about, by the way, Sharon uh, compiled this tale, so she's the one who's the author of this, so... This is the Sharon Show in a very good way. <laughs> Today we're going to be visiting a very old folktale about Ostara and the hare. Ostara is the goddess of the dawn and spring. She has a long, beautiful red hair and wears a long cloak over her pale white skin. And although she sleeps through the summer, fall, and winter months. When she awakens in the spring, the world 
awakens with her. And while she sleeps, there is one creature that she relies upon. This creature has long ears, strong back legs, and a twitchy nose. A rabbit, or in this case, a slightly larger rabbit called a hare. And as the sun begins to hang in the sky, a little longer each day, the hare begins to dance on the earth. The pounding of its feet sound like a drum and awakens Ostara. However, one year, Ostara wasn't ready, and she overslept. And the winter lingered longer than it usually did. Do you know how sometimes it feels as if winter will never end? That's because Ostara is sleeping in. I love the winter. When Ostara eventually did wake, she looked across the land, and it was covered in snow. And as she walked through the snowy world, trying to rouse it from its wintry rest, she came across a sparrow on the ground. The bird was young, hardly more than a fledgling. And it had hatched while the world was still too cold for it to thrive. It was completely motionless. And Ostara knew that the poor thing had frozen to death and that her sleeping in had caused this misfortune. But as Ostara looked at the little bird, she saw the faintest movement in its breast. She realized it was still alive. She felt a great warm feeling of compassion filled her heart, and she gently lifted the bird in her hands, and she blew her warm breath on it. Can you blow on it? Can you blow on it? She cupped the bird to her chest. And much to the goddess's delight, the bird's eyes began to flicker and its wings began to slowly move. And Ostara once again took the bird and slowly breathed her breath upon it. Oh, that is warm. Thank you. The bird got stronger and stronger. And it finally sat up in Ostara's hand and began to sing a beautiful song for her. She, she hopped onto Ostara's shoulder, and together they continued through the world. As Ostara's feet touched the ground, the earth greened, and the flowers began to spring forth, and the animals began to frolic all around them. And the little bird sat upon Ostara's shoulder. It was her constant companion. And for that year, and for the next year, and for the next decade, and for the next century, this would continue for many long years with the little bird as Ostara's beloved companion. Yeah. And they went everywhere together. And the sparrow would sing songs that were only for Ostara. Now, every year, once spring had sprung, Ostara would host a grand festival in the meadow to celebrate. The animals and children from all around the world would gather there bearing gifts to the goddess as tokens of happiness and gratitude. And one year, the day before the festival, Ostara and her beloved companion were walking the earth looking for the perfect spot for the celebration, and she spotted a white hare standing proud and strong. Usually, when Ostara would walk around, the hares would bow to her. But this one did not. In fact, it stood and it looked at Ostara. How dare it? And as Star was sizing up this hair, she saw something change. She saw the hair looking at the sparrow with love in its eyes. And the sparrow looked at the hair and began to sing a song that Ostara had never heard before. The sparrow was singing to the hair. And as the sparrow began to sing 
the hare began to dance, and the hare danced in a way that Ostara had never seen before. It jumped and twirled and twisted as the sparrow sang for it. The song was a song of deep and true love. Ostara saw this, felt a little jealous, but she saw that the love that was passing between the spare and the harrow, and she knew that the right action was to give them her blessing. So Ostara bowed down to the sparrow and gently placed a kiss on its head. And something magical happened. The sparrow's feathers began to turn a snow white. They swirled and they swirled around the sparrow. And when the feathers had finally settled, Ostara looked and where the sparrow once stood was a white hare. The sparrow had changed into a she hare and the two hares hopped off. Wow, indeed. The bird changed into a hare. Yes, and so the next year, when Ostara was awakening the earth once more, she came upon a meadow, and it was filled with hares. They were dancing in a spiral. And as Ostara approached the group, they parted, allowing her to pass through. And in the center was the white jack hare and the white she hare that had once been Ostara's companion. And as she approached, they bowed and stepped apart to reveal a nest filled with eggs. For although the sparrow had transformed, into a hare, she never lost that ability to lay eggs. So that is part of the reason why with spring we have rabbits and we have eggs and we have those birds that are marshmallow peeps. <laughs> that is why we eat them after we let them get stale. Stale peeps are the best. <laughs> We are not microwaving peeps. Now, <laughs> this gives you an idea. Does springtime make you want to dance sometimes? All right? Does it make you feel good and warm and maybe a little bit of love in your heart? Yeah. This is the time of year where we embrace that love. We embrace the sun and we embrace the length of the days. Y'all, can I say thank you? Thank you very much for your attention. Are you ready to go to your classes now? No? Well, you're tough. You're going anyways. <laughs> no! Let us please sing our children to their classes. Let us take a moment now in the spirit of meditation and in the spirit of prayer. I encourage you to put your feet on the floor if it is comfortable for you. Let your hands fall in your lap, palms open if that's comfortable. Take a deep breath. Drop your shoulders. Take another deep breath. Where's the tension? The small of your back, your shoulders, your brow. Breathe into that spot. And as you exhale, let the tension go with it. This is your time. This is your hour to put aside 
all of the things that race through your head during the week. All of the lists, all the have-tos, all of the musts. Put them aside. Look at that center that is you. What is the love that you have for that? Where is the brightness that grows inside you? Where do you love yourself? This is your hour. This is your reminder that you are enough as you are. This is your reminder that you do not need to be perfect. You just need to be. Breathe in. Claim this time for yourself. For you are a creature of the universe that deserves all of the love. May it be so. Each week, we lift up joys and sorrows in our community. I want to lift up especially, many of you know Dan O'Rourke recently was in the hospital. He's gone home since then and is recovering and appreciates all of the well wishes. Our hearts are still with Skip as he recovers from his second fall, Skip Nault. And I want to remind each and every one of us here that this community holds each other and supports each other. I want to remind everybody about our pastoral care program. Our pastoral care program is for people who are feeling that maybe there's just a little bit too much going on right now in their life. Maybe they're dealing with a personal health issue. Maybe they're dealing with a divorce. Maybe they are just dealing with the fact that they're empty nesters and they just need someone to talk to. Our pastoral care program is here for that. Chris Struzik is the head of our pastoral care program. And I know I see a couple other people. If you're part of the pastoral care team, can you please raise your hand? So we've got Gail Woosley and Sue Gross who are here as well. If you feel you need to have someone to talk to, these are great people, and that's what they're here for. And I want to remind you all to utilize this wonderful resource. I am also here for the same thing. And as we lift up our joys and sorrows for the week, the things that are either tying us down or lifting us up for the past week, you are welcome to come and grab a stone to place either the joy that lifts you up upon it or the sorrow that weighs you down and to come and place them in the water. And if you would like to have me visit you over the week, touch my hand, let me know. And if you'd like someone from pastoral care to reach out to you, let Chris know. Please join us now in singing Spirit of Life as we do our stone ritual for joys and sorrows.
Our faith is centered on the belief that we can make this world a better place for all who dwell in it. In order to realize that vision, we need both the motivation and the means. Your donation helps the community put its faith into action by supporting our programming and facilities. This morning and throughout the month of March, donations that are not designated for another purpose will be split with Viola Startsman Free Clinic. The Viola Startsman Clinic is committed to providing compassionate medical, dental, behavioral, and specialty care, as well as resources for daily needs like food, transportation, housing, housing assistance, and more. I don't see it, but the offering will, will now be taken and gratefully accepted.
please join me in this unison reading. The words are on the screen. Let us be grateful when we are able to give, for many do not have that privilege. Let us be grateful for those who share their gifts, for we are enriched by their giving. Let us be grateful even for our needs, so that we may learn from the generosity of others. Just a little bit. I just like to see it go up and down. <laughs> Happy Equinox! The days are getting longer. Flowers are coming back to life. Birds are beginning to chirp their little hearts out and build their nest. And we are awakening from our winter slothfulness. At least I am awakening from my winter slothfulness. We're also doing some spring cleaning now, right? So today, with the energy of Ostara, we're going to do some spring cleaning. As you entered today, you were presented with a package with an envelope, an egg, a piece of paper, and pen. If you didn't receive one and would like one, raise your hand and we'll get it one to you. Now I have a disclaimer. Um, some of the pens are green and they have a phrase and a phone number. They're from a workshop I did many years ago in a former life. They aren't advertising for anything, but in the spirit of recycling, I couldn't bear to pitch them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why they're there. There is some historical debate about the goddess Ostara. She appears to be an Anglo-Saxon goddess. And most agree that probably was a form of the Viking Norse goddess, Yestro, where we get the name Easter. I always wondered what the name Easter came from. It's from that goddess, from the Viking goddess. And I chose this folk tale as our source today because I think it has it all. We have a fallible goddess. I love that. She would rather sleep in than do her job. I can relate to that some days. <laughs> we have compassion, resurrection, love, growth, renewal, and transformation. Basically everything we associate with spring. So our goddess overslept and her actions almost killed the little bird. When she found the bird, she was overcome with compassion and she decided to resurrect it. Do you notice how many stories about spring or that happened this spring have a theme of resurrection? This theme is not just about renewal, but it encourages us to find the time to do some deep inner work, thus spring cleaning. If you are willing, I'd like you to take a moment to center yourself. Take a deep, slow breath. Inhale. Slowly exhale. Do this a few times to relax your body. Find your center and feel your heart. Let's find the energy of Ostara and let's use it to see if there's something within us that we need to resurrect. Many of us have put essential pieces of our essence away during our lifetimes. Sometimes it's because we don't have the time to nurture it. Sometimes because it's easier to live without showing that piece and part of ourselves. Sometimes it's been injured and it retreated in pain. Well, today we're going to do some, I invite you, I should say, to do some self-exploration. I'm not going to force you to do it. And what have you lost? What piece of yourself is hidden away? Perhaps it's a hobby. Maybe you have abandoned your love of reading or music because life is just so hectic. Maybe it's a relationship that became estranged. Perhaps it's something that is vital to your happiness and you put it away for another time of day. What is it that will bring fullness, more life to you? What is it that will reclaim the gift of you, which is unique and then makes you the incredible individual that you are? 
What will feed the energy to shine brighter in the world? I invite you to take a moment to reflect. In your packet, you'll find an envelope. And in that envelope, you'll find some seeds. Now, every packet should have a sunflower and pumpkin seed, and the other ones are cosmos or any annual seed that I had. And we're going to use these seeds to focus our resurrection ritual. Seeds require care. Once they are planted, they require water, food, and sunlight to grow. Well, those things that we have hidden away within us, they're already planted within you. So now the task is to discover, feed, and nurture them. Once you have decided what you would like to resurrect in your life, I invite you to take the packet and to hold it in your hands. Visualize what you would like to grow and reclaim. As you lovingly hold the packet, because this is your essence, take a breath. And just like Ostara brought back the sparrow, breathe your intent onto the seeds. Caress the thought for a moment. This is something that is so precious because it's a part of you. This is something that will make you complete, more full, more whole. Now, if you have decided what you want to resurrect, let's take our egg. And I invite you to take the seeds and pour them into your egg. Ostara released her favorite companion because of love. The sparrow fell in love with the white jack hare, and Ostara found enough love within herself to give the sparrow a new form. She allowed the sparrow to transform to find her happiness, and then she set her free. What action will it take for you to love yourself enough to help bring your seed back to life? I'd like you to take a moment to reflect on what it will require. Do you need to schedule some time for yourself every day? Do you need to have an important conversation? Do you need to request the help of others to support you in your journey? This is the time to find the love for yourself to take the next step into your springtime. Take a moment to reflect, and then with your piece of paper and pen, I'd like you to write what that action needs to be. I hope your pen's all right. 
I'm sorry, what? Yes, they're all new pens, so they probably have to have the seal broken from them. Once you have written what you want, take your paper and put it inside the egg. Y'all know that I always have to do kindergarten things, right? <laughs> vital thing to remember is that in the story, although the sparrow had transformed into a hare, she never lost her ability to lay her eggs. Her new form still honored what was her birthright. Resurrection is not about changing who you are now, but honoring the part of you that is your essence and has been tucked away allowing all of you to grow into your lovely, perfect self. And with that knowledge, I invite you to close your egg. And if you will, hold the egg to your breast, just like Ostara did this, the sparrow. And make a covenant with yourself that we, you will do the work to nurture these seeds. If you would say the words, after me, let it grow, let it grow, let it bloom, let it glow. You know, eggs do it all. They feed us, they create life, and they can be lovely decorations. Their shape allows them to roll, rest, and at certain times of the year, which is coming up, they will stand upright. They have protein and fat and come in their own container and they create life. And they can also be decorated. So as you leave today, you'll find some stickers scattered about the hall. There'll be some on the chalice table, back at the sound booth, on the joy and Sor sorrows table and on the welcoming table. And if you would like to, feel free to stop and decorate your egg during the post sleep. We want to remind you of your transformation journey upon which you're about to embark. And remember, the decorations do not change the egg. They just make it more unique. May the energy of the springtime bring you love, renewal, and transformation. So mote it be. Now, if you'll please stand for our closing hymn. I can't find the number, but the words will be up there.
The great thing about this metaphor of the eggs and the spirit inside, I love that idea. Decorating the egg doesn't change what's inside. It just makes it shine, makes it special, makes it unique. Each one of you here is a unique individual with not just capabilities of good and beauty, but joy and delight. Each one of you is needed. Each one of you, when you celebrate that special intention, that thing that's in the center of the egg, when you do that, this world is a better place. Decorate your eggs brightly, my friends. Show the world the beauty on the outside that you claim on the inside. Grow and nurture what makes you beautiful, what makes you strong, for we need that. May it be so. Blessed be. Thank you.